and there was basically two of everything. And ultimately, you both lose. It's a lose-lose. So it was a difficult situation for many years. It was set up for failure, I think, from, from day one. What could possibly go wrong? Early to mid-1970s, um, the community was formed, and within it over the next decade were two private clubs, right? East Point Golf and Racquet and East Point Country Club. Two golf courses uh, separating the community. It, it was set up for failure, I think, from, from day one. As the economy changed, as golf changed, as more golf courses were being built in the area, we started to suffer. And not just one course, both golf courses were suffering. So you both lower your prices, you both compete with each other, and ultimately you both lose. It's a lose-lose. Finally, in 2015, we figured out how to merge. At the end of the merger, what the country club was left with, all of our facilities were in relatively good shape, but they were aging. Uh, the golf and racket particularly uh, needed an awful lot of work. And there was basically two of everything. Um, we realized that we had an extra driving range, an extra tennis complex, an extra parking lot, an extra clubhouse. Okay, let's do something. Now, how do we do it? How do we pay for it? And that's, a, that's a, another story. For two years after the merger, the board looked at, and the Long Range Planning Committee looked at various alternatives. Nothing ever happened, principally because they couldn't figure out how to fund it. And the question came up is, you know, how can we generate some capital? And then uh, we started to develop this plan to take out 25 acres and sell it for real estate to generate the capital in order to make the needed improvements to get new members. We realized that the West Course was the course that we would look at in terms of taking out the range, the tennis complex, and maybe a portion of part of the golf course. We started out here 52 homes, and we wound up needing 75 homes in order to pay for the development. So it really was pretty simple and, and straightforward in terms of carving out about 25 acres that took in the driving range, which was about 10 acres. The tennis complex was three or four acres. And then turning the two par fives, one and nine, into par fours gave us another four or five acres. So we were able to assemble, uh, along with part of the, the parking lot, about 25 acres of land that was in a great location, accessible from major roads very close to I-95 that would be very marketable and um, in a good place to have an opportunity to get the zoning approved, which is really the big hurdle. There's a great demand for uh, residential property in this area and there's really nowhere for the builders to go. We were in a competition with probably a dozen other companies initially. This is a unique opportunity in what we thought was kind of a, 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 you know, a diamond in the rough type of opportunity. So we were very, very interested. One of the things we can do as a smaller family business is we can be a little more nimble, we can make decisions a little quicker, and we can be a little more flexible in our decision making. We were able to come up with a format where again, we were comfortable and the club was comfortable printing money along the way. So that way, they could keep the golf course modifications going, they could use the money for other things they were doing to the imp improve the property, and they can continue with the planning and the plans and the approvals for the new club itself. And the club liked the fact that they would release a substantial amount of money up front prior to closing to help the club pay for all of these soft costs that are necessary in order to just put the shovels in the ground. It's going to end up that there's going to be well over $8 million of value created here and that money is going to go to improve the community and build a new club. We are going to construct a new modern resort style recreation center with a 9,000 square foot fitness center, 
all fully equipped with brand new equipment. Adjacent to that, on the same structure, will be a sports bar and a bistro restaurant overlooking a 10,000 square foot deck with two swimming pools, uh, a large jacuzzi, two fire pits overlooking uh, the brand new golf holes to be an absolutely spectacular view. And the other major portion of it was to redesign and reconstruct uh, three of our golf holes. The first hole, the ninth hole, and the 18th hole. John Sanford and his group puts together this beautiful architectural plan of these new three holes. And you know, he's got fill in this lake, create this lake, move this tee, this green goes over here. When you take 25 acres out of golf, and turn it into a residential subdivision, you have to add lakes. We still had to come up with three additional acres of lakes within about a 20 acre golf course area. It was a bit of a balancing act in order to keep those three holes playable and enjoyable for the average member out here, and at the same time expand the lakes in order to meet the water management requirements. If we can't do that, you don't have a project. You cannot build any of this without a South Florida water management permit. What I wanted to do was to get the golf course open as fast as possible, and that meant to get it open in May, we would have to sod. Had we gone with the normal approach of sodding and sprigging the grass, it takes at least three months to grow that in. To sod the entire three holes is approximately $100,000 more than just to put down seed. It's not only the timing of it. If you use sod, it's a better solution short term and long term than seed. Now, since we're going to sod all the golf course improvements, the course will be ready to play in about four weeks. So that accelerates the opening schedule by at least two months. We have to match the grass of yesteryear, so to speak. This, when it was built, uh, 419 Bermuda was the grass of choice. Tiff Dwarf for the greens was the choice. And now 40 something years later, Celebration Bermuda or Tiff Tough Bermuda or Latitude. And then there's Tiff Eagle for the greens. Those are the new blends of grasses. But they want to keep consistent throughout what they have. So it was kind of difficult to find Tiff Dwarf greens. That's a thing of the past. There's a couple growers that have it, but that grass is a premium. You know, this job is, is, is different than others because of out of control issues with permits that were basically months and months behind. There's no doubt that there's pressure on this project. I got to really compliment all of them, particularly our members, for their patience. Uh, but I didn't want to push the patient's button too long. We know the, the club is anxious to get the golf course back. The hope now is that we'll have the course ready to play before the end of this season. What could possibly go wrong?